Okay guys, howdy, I'm back. Um, we're now going to be looking at, um, I actually tried that one method that I had that I was preparing before and it it wasn't working out like I thought it was going to so I went ahead and just bit the bullet and bought a bunch of transparencies. And so that, that, I've heard that's another great way to go so we're going to give it a shot. I've got the top of the circuit board printed and it's on as well as the bottom. And like I said I drilled some tooling holes on either side of it for alignment purposes. So now we're going to give this a shot. What I'm going to do now is I have my iron set up. I'm just taking a regular regular iron that you use, you know, like just a regular uh, clothing iron. Set it to the hottest setting that it can go and what we're going to do is we're going to push push pretty good pressure on it as we iron it with the iron. We're going to push down real hard on the iron and just iron this, this stuff on there and uh, I don't know, maybe three or four swipes or so, I don't know, just until it gets nice and hot and push real hard when doing this. We'll do that to both sides. We'll do it to one side, flip it over, do it the other side. And then hopefully we'll let it cool. And hopefully when it cools we should be able to peel this off and the circuit should stay on the PCB. And the plastic should peel off. So that's what we're going to try. I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll come back with the results. Okay guys. Um, I've went ahead and done this. Um, as you can see, it looks like it uh, transferred uh, more or less okay. Um, there's still some rough parts. What we're going to do is, um, or what you can do, if there's any spots that got ripped out, see like this trace is kind of bad. What you can do, I don't know, hopefully maybe, let's see if I can, if I can do this, if I can, if I can zoom in here. There we go, zoom in. Like this, what I'm going to do, just take a regular old Sharpie, maybe the fine tip kind and you're just gonna kinda fill this in you know just kinda take the sharpie if you can if I can well if I can get a sharpie that'll work okay here we go got one that's gonna work okay just take and just kinda fill that trace in so you can get it this way and then what you can do is then we'll Fill that in. Go. Might be a little fat. And like I said, this is prototype stuff, so you know it's doesn't have to be perfect, right? So what you do is just you use this. This will basically be your etch resist, is what you're doing. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest of them. But that's kind of what you do. You just kind of fill in the voids, you know. And so I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of them, kind of like like this one down here. You know, we're going to take that guy and. Probably kind of fill him in a little bit, make sure he gets good and masked off for etching. You know, just stuff like that. And you just kind of clean it up, make it look a little better. I know I kind of messed up right there, so I'll do that. And, you know, just kind of clean it up, touch it up with with with, uh, with just a marker, and that will provide the etch resist as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and get it all ready for the etching process. Okay, guys, so now we are going to cut our PCB out and we have kind of an outline that we can see so that's what we're going to do now. We're going to go ahead and cut this out. Okay, more or less. It's not beautiful, but hey, it'll work. Okay. More or less, there we go. Alright, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to stop the camera and I'll show you next the next thing we're supposed to do after we do this. 
Okay guys, I'm back. Alright, now what you're going to need is you're going to need some gloves. Um, I buy these. These are the non-latex gloves. You can get these from like Walgreens. You get a whole box of them, so get some gloves. Okay. Um, you're going to need uh, some sort of like Gladware or something. That's what I use. I just use this little Gladware Tupperware box. You need something to contain the, the ferric chloride. So, towel for that. So you need you need a box. Hopefully, some preferably something you can seal up because you want to seal this stuff up when you're done using it. Then, if you just go to um, any place, a uh, you know maybe Radio Shack or someplace, you can get uh, PCB etchant solution. Is what it is. And uh, what what uh, more or less it really is is it's uh, ferric chloride. Is what this is. Um, I think if you read the back of it, it actually tells what's in it. But that's essentially what it is. It's ferric chloride. Like I said, it will. Uh, it's PCB etchant solution. You can get it kind of anywhere, any PCB store. So we'll need that. Okay. So we'll need some etchant solution. And then first things first. And then of course we need our PCB. So first things first. Always got to make sure and. Make sure, and when you're dealing with chemicals, guys, make sure and use protection uh, so far as, you know, your hands and your eyes. Um, it's always good to have a good pair of, uh, of goggles or some type of safety glasses, uh, something like that to wear on your eyes. Because um, you do not want this stuff to get in your eyes. Um, you don't want it to be on your hands either. So we're going to take some of our etchant solution. What we're going to do, set this off to the side. I've already got some in here from previous... PCB etchings that I've done and yeah this stuff comes out and it just looks black almost but you'll take and you'll pour some some in there like I said I've already got some in there and it's, I've only used this you can do at least man, I don't know maybe three or four boards maybe uh, depending on their size if they're really big then you know, maybe less but if they're real small you can do maybe a couple three or four of them um, you can uh, you can do before the solution gets so saturated with copper that it won't it won't suck up any more copper so then you need to change it and so you got to dispose of this uh, properly make sure and read the back of your bottle on uh, how to dispose of it some it's safe to pour down the toilet some you actually need to go dispose of it properly so make sure you read the labels make sure you find out what is safe what isn't safe uh, for uh, either home disposal or if you have to actually take it and dispose of the chemicals properly at a certain uh, site and it'll tell you on the back of the bottle it'll tell you what uh, what kind of chemicals there are and if they're safe or if it's uh, dispose of in your in your uh, toilet or something or if it's more or if you need to take it somewhere and they usually give you information on where to take it so so what we do is we just take our PCB and you just drop it in there and what you want to do the idea behind this um, is you want to keep the solution moving okay because you don't want the solution to be stagnant on it on any one spot because if it if it is it sucks up a bunch of copper and then that's it you need to jostle it to move new solution in to suck up more copper okay because that's what's going to do that's why they call it an etchant it's going to actually etch the copper off it's actually going to pull it off it's going to dissolve it into the solution so what I'm going to do is whilst we're doing this I'm going to go ahead and stop the camera here and then we'll pick back up when this is done so all you gotta do is just keep it jostling keep it moving uh, sometimes what I do is I'll hold up on it and then and jostle it back and forth so I can see it moving it's almost kinda like developing film kind of if you've ever done that and you just gotta just kinda let the solution do its work just let it wash over it kinda like the tide washing over the beach you just kinda let it wash over the PCB and let it just slosh back and forth on it and it will eventually take that copper off you it looks like it doesn't but at the same time if you're using kinda of like what I've got I've got like some half ounce copper or whatever if you've got a few mils of copper on there I mean it takes a little bit I mean it's not a instantaneous process so it takes a little bit to get it off but pretty soon you'll see it it'll start getting it'll start thinning out and you'll start to see the at least in my case this has a green FRP board below it and so uh, you've got uh, You'll, you'll start seeing the green starting to show through once you once you do this so I'm gonna keep uh, sloshing this around um, I'll get back with you when we uh, when we return so be back in a minute guys okay guys I got the board for oil etch see how you can kinda see through it now so we got it etched so what now we're gonna do is we're gonna take some acetone and we're going to wipe all of the toner off because the acetone will take the toner off 
and it should reveal the copper underneath. Watch. Kind of a cool process. See that? Isn't that cool? Peels off all the copper that you had. Okay. See with the back. With the back. This will be really cool. Whoa. And that's pretty much how it's done. Yeah, that's pretty much how it's done. I mean, I'll, I'll clean this up a little more, but it's pretty much how it's done. You have your own PCB. Next, we'll have to drill all the holes. That'll be the next thing, is we're going to have to drill all the holes. So that'll be next.